Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the oncology paper presentations of the First Asian Oncology Society Conference. There will be two co-chairs for this segment. The first three researches will be introduced to us by Dr. Kenneth Samala, medical oncology consultant at Medical Center Manila. He is a contributing author of I Am Platinum which received the 2016 NAST Most Outstanding Book Award and also a contributing writer at The Binge, www.thebinge.com. Please welcome Dr. Kenneth Samala. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the oral paper presentations. I am Dr. Kenneth Samala, and I will chair tonight's session. I will introduce all the speakers, and each one will give his talk one after the other. Please enter in the chat box your questions, and our speakers will answer them at the group Q&A session later. Our first paper is about risk and predictive indicators of anastomotic leakage in laparoscopic low anterior section for rectal cancer to be presented by Dr. Masahiro Fukada from Japan. Our second paper is on prognostic significance of the C-reactive protein to albumin ratio in patients with metastatic colorectal cancer treated with trifluridine timidine phosphorylase inhibitor as later line chemotherapy to be presented by Dr. Masatsune Shibutani from Japan. Our final paper will be presented by Dr. Usamo I. Tanaka, also from Japan, entitled Radiotherapy for Left Breast Cancer, Dosimetric Evaluation of Heart and Coronary Artery. Everyone, let us welcome the speakers. Now, I would like to give an oral presentation of risk and predictive indicators for anastomotic leakage of laparoscopic low anterior resection with double stapling technique anastomosis. We have no financial relationships to disclose. My name is Masahiro Fukada. I'm in the Department of Surgical Oncology, Gifu University School of Medicine. In Japan, laparoscopic surgery for colorectal cancer has become widespread in recent years, and the number of operations per year exceeds 10,000. Postoperative anastomotic leakage is one of the major complications in laparoscopic rectal surgery. It is believed that anastomotic leakage not only worsens patients' QOL but also cancer prognosis. There are two aims in this study. The first is to analyze preoperative and intraoperative factors to identify risk factors for leakage. The second is to analyze postoperative factors and identify are predictors of leakage. This slide shows the analysis flowchart for this study. This study targeted 114 patients who underwent laparoscopic electric cancer surgery at the GIF University City Hospital from 2008 to 2018. Simultaneous resection of other organs and construction of diabetic stoma cases are excluded. First, I will show the result of analysis in preoperative and intraoperative factors. This is a slide on patient-related factors. A significant difference was found in male and the history of diabetes. Next is a slide on tumor-related factors. There were significant differences in tumor location and the distance from the anal verge to the lower edge of the tumor. Finally, this is a slide 
on surgery related factors. There was a significant difference in the number of staplers used for rectal dissection. Regarding the amount of intraoperative blood loss, a significant difference was showed by setting the cutoff value to 50 milliliters. This slide shows the result of multivariate analysis for preoperative and intraoperative factors. As a result, it was shown that an intraoperative blood loss may be a risk factor. Next, the results of analysis in postoperative factors are shown. Tachycardia on the first of postoperative day, white blood cell count, CRP level, fever on the third postoperative day, and the first defecation day after surgery showed a significant difference. This slide shows the result of multivariate analysis for postoperative factors. The result showed that fever on the third postoperative day and the first defecation day after surgery may be early predictors of leakage. This is a slide that summarizes the result of this study. From here, it is discussion. It has been reported in the past that intraoperative blood loss is a risk factor for leakage. Some reports that intraoperative bleeding itself is at risk of leakage. However, we believe that the amount of blood loss is an indicator that reflects the difficulty of rectal transaction and anastomosing procedures. In other words, well-coordinated laparoscopic surgery using standardized procedures may reduce blood loss and as a result reduce the risk of leakage. This slide shows a comparison of the surgical outcomes before and after standardization of procedures in our, in our hospital. As a result, the amount of breeding was significantly reduced and the leakage rate was almost half. The median time at which leakage was confirmed was postoperative day 4. According to the analysis of postoperative factors, most leakage occurs within postoperative day 3 and become a diagnosable symptomatic state after postoperative day 4. In other words, the interval from onset to diagnosis of leakage may be related to their severity. As a result of this study, early first defecation after surgery was cited as a predictor of leakage. Therefore, in these cases, potential anastomotic leakage should be suspected and monitored by fasting management and image inspection should be performed. This is the last slide of the conclusion. Thank you for your attention. Hello everyone. Uh, today I'll be giving a talk on prognostic significance of the CRP to albumination in patients with metastatic colorectal cancer treated with FTD TPI as later line chemotherapy. New drugs for metastatic colorectal cancer have recently been developed for use in later line chemotherapy and uh, have contributed to the further prolongation of the survival of patients. However, um, in later line chemotherapy, uh, treatment failure may lead to the discontinuation of chemotherapy and the 
transition to best supportive care. And therefore, a biomarker able to predict the effects of later in chemotherapy is required. We evaluated the significance of the CR as a marker for predicting the chemotherapy outcome in patients with metastatic colorectal cancer treated with FTD TPI as a later line chemotherapy. We retrospectively reviewed the medical records of 40 patients with metastatic colorectal cancer who are treated with FTD TPI at our hospital. Fred treatment blood samples were obtained within one week before the initiation of FTD TPI. The CR was calculated from the blood samples by dividing the serum CRP level by the serum albumin level. According to the ROC analysis, the cutoff value of the CAR was set at 0.122. The correlations between the CAR and the clinical pathological factors are shown in this table. A high CAR was significantly associated with a great number of prayer regimens and higher serum LDH level and tended to be associated with male gender and a greater number of organs with metastasis. The number of organs with metastasis is associated with the extent of cancer growth. And the serum LDH level is associated with tumor aggressiveness reflecting hypoxia and angiogenesis. And the number of prior regimens uh, is expected to be associated with the degree of disease progression. And therefore, the CR was sought to reflect the whole tumor volume and speed of disease progression. Uh, and the next two slides, I'll be showing you the correlation between the CAR and the treatment outcomes. Uh, as you can see, uh, the low CAR group had a significantly higher disease control rate than the high CAR group. And uh, the progression-free and overall survival were also better for the low CAR group than for the high CAR group. As cancer progress, inflammation and the production of cytokines will increase. Uh, these cytokines also promote cancer progression and metastasis. Uh, therefore, inflammation markers are sought to reflect the whole tumor volume and speed of disease progression. In addition, uh, inflammation has been reported to promote chemo resistance. Uh, so, high CAR correlate with worse chemotherapic outcomes. Uh, these are the relationships between the CAR and the safety. Uh, we thought that uh, high CAR may be associated with a worse prognosis because Patients with a high CR might be expected to receive an insufficient dose of drugs due to their poor condition. However, no significant differences were observed regarding the degree of dose reduction and the rate of discontinuation of the chemotherapy between the low CR group and the high CR group. Uh, therefore, uh, the correlation between the high CR and the poor prognosis was presumed to be due to the momentum of cancer growth and increased resistance to chemotherapy rather than an insufficient dose of drug. In conclusion, the CR may be a useful indicator for predicting chemotherapy outcome in patients with metastatic colorectal cancer 
who have been treated with FTD TPI as a later line chemotherapy and may be great help when considering treatment strategies. Thank you. The coronavirus disease is causing a lot of trouble around the world and I hope things return to normal as soon as possible. Thank you. Here I will make a presentation entitled Effect of Hard Dose Reduction by IMRT in Postoperative Radiotherapy for Left Sided Breast Cancer. I'm a Dr. Osamu Tanaka from Japan. Purpose to release the hard dose for patients undergoing postoperative radiotherapy for left sided breast cancer is critical for the heart disorder. The inspiration breast hold and the intestine modulated radiotherapy IMRT are reported as a method for releasing a cardiac dose, especially for the respiratory descending artery LAD. We compare the radiation methods of various degree and examine the detail of the difference between static IMRT and volumetric modulated arc therapy, VOIMAT. So, we examine the overall 20 patients undergoing post-operative radiotherapy for left-sided breast cancer from July 2016 to June 2018 at our institute. We conducted the following five treatment plans. Uh, two field static IMRT, four field static IMRT, 50 degree dual partial arc volumetry <coughs> therapy, and 18 degrees dual partial at the brain mat, and 2200 to 1 degrees partial brain mat. So, the press dose was. 50 gray fraction for the planning charge volume PTB in all treatment plans that the symmetric calculation was optimized to achieve coverage of 50 prescribed for 95 percentage of PTB by inverse treatment planning using the Monte Carlo algorithm. Each 5 prime uh, analyzes uh, DVH and the heart V10 coverage of 10% of the volume of the heart, LADs with hen, PT with D95, and MU and HI. Results, uh, LAD and heart dose were uh, superior in two field static IMRT. So, heart and LAD in five plants to, um, the, um, the coverage of 40 degree brain mat for prescribed dose of PT with D95 was significantly lower than that of the other treatment plans. D95 of the breast PTP was approximately 46 gray. HA was also high and the uniformity within PTB was described. For the other treatment plants, T95 showed a high PTB coverage and uh, 48 degree or higher. For, for field static MT became the best dose distribution. As for the dose of heart and LED, two field MRT 40 degree brain mat, 80 degree brain mat was highly effective in reaction to those. And the MU static MT was lower value than brain mat in radiation methods. As for the OAR dose, to field S to field static IMRT was the highest in reduction effect of the heart and LAD. Conclusion to field static IMRT and the 40 degree to brain matter method within the narrow radiation range. Therefore, the dose reduction of OAR was high result. On the other hand, for this for static MRT 8 degree VMAT and 210 partial VMAT have a wide radiation range, direct X rays can easily hit the OAR. Therefore, it is difficult to reduce the OAR, but it is method with high PTB coverage. In the case of IMRT, 
Their effects are highly dependent on body shape. Therefore, in the clinic, it is important to reduce the number of field and to irradiation length to enhance the reduced effect of OAR, taking into consideration the partial body type. Thank you very much for attention. Hello, good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us in today's um, live Q&A for the po first poster presentation. We have here Dr. Kenneth Samala, and he's the chair for this session. So how are you, Dr. Ken? Hi, Dr. Yuli. Hope, hope you're doing well on a Sunday evening. All right, you too. So we have different um, papers presented a while ago. And what are your insights or comments in these studies presented? Okay, so actually we are very, very fortunate tonight because we have three different uh, but very, very interesting um, researches on cancer. So we have, of course, Dr. Fukada's um, a research on, on medicine in the field of surgery. And then we have Dr. Uh, Shibutani's um, on chemotherapy, on the role of prognostic factors. And uh, of course, Dr. Tanaka's um, uh, research on, on, on radiation therapy. So I think uh, these are very, very important uh, topics that we can definitely um, uh, learn a lot from. Um, first first of all, I'd like to commend Dr. Fukada's uh, research on, on determining the indicators for an asthmatic leakage in low, lower anterior section um, sur uh, surgery because um, Majority, I think mo most of us will have experience or, or, or colleagues from surgery would have experience with an osmotic leak and it's really very, fairly common. So I think knowing uh, what factors can actually contribute to this uh, dreaded complication, it's very, very welcoming data, of course. Um, so I think it's important that we take note of um, of, of the findings of Dr. Uh, uh, Fukada's uh, research I mean, I'm particularly interested that uh, you know, knowing the that his his um, uh, in recommendations about standardizing improve standardization of the procedure actually improved the outcomes and uh, uh, and knowing that most of the anastomotic leaks actually occur within the third to fourth day after the procedure. So that's for for us, no, as as doctors, as clinicians who are taking care of these patients, that's very very important that we know what to expect yes. and i think that's that's it's easier to it's easier to uh, to to deal with something and to address the problem when we know what we're expecting so that i think that's that's one of the things that um, I, I i learned you know from from that particular research when we talk about uh, dr shibutani's um, um lecture uh, research on the prognostic significance of the crp to ab or the car crp to ab mean ratio um, with the use of F after using FT FTD TPI as later line therapy in colorectal cancer, so um, it's 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 also again one of I think it's an important finding as well. No, again the in initial research. If we know things that can actually help us take care of our patients more, I think that that's definitely for them. And and knowing that uh, there are actually. Um, tools, you know, as simple as getting the CRP levels and taking the albumin levels are, I think this, these tests are mostly widely available. So um, knowing these things definitely will help us care of our patients uh, even more. And then the, there was also the uh, findings that the, the, the lower the CAR or lower the CRP to albumin ratio, the higher the disease control date, BFS and OS. And at the end of the day, these are things that are very, very important, not just for us as clinicians, but you know, these are things that our patients also ask us. And definitely lastly, with Dr. Tanaka's um, effect of the heart dose reduction by IMRT in post of RT for left-sided breast cancer, um, we do see a lot of breast cancer patients here in the Philippines, and we do see a lot of patients that will eventually undergo um, radiation therapy uh, after chemo because of nodal positivity. So um, I think this is some very, very important as well, uh, knowing that uh, there are a lot of advances in the field of non-chemotherapy, but in radiation therapy as well. So 
I think it's really very important. And I like the take-home message of Dr. Tanaka, you know, going back to the patient. You know, I mean, looking at considering the patient's body type. I think that's very, very uh, important for us as well. No, sometimes we're, we're we look at just the the imaging, uh, but uh, it's also very important. You know, just to look at their look at our patients, consider their patients and patients' body type or habitus. So all in all, these are very, very important, and I must say, very practical uh, outcomes as well. And 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 if there are fellows or our, our medical oncologists or fellows or any residents in training, tune in tonight. Now, these are these are things that. Um, no, definitely we can also do in our own setting. Hopefully, no, these are so something that we can do for our Filipino cancer patients. Okay. That's that's wonderful. No, thanks for commenting on each um, study presented. But I'd like to get your insight again on what is the importance of this Congress, this Asian uh, Congress, and sharing um, Asian experience and research uh, outputs. Yeah. So so definitely, it's it's it. Um, very happy and very grateful that we are actually doing this amidst the pandemic. Um, these there are a lot of challenges already, but I guess it just goes to show that uh, you know medicine oncology is a lifelong commitment to learning, and I'm very happy to see several researches and hearing lectures, not just around Asia, but but uh, speakers from other countries. From, from US and Europe as well. So very, very important because, you know, at the end of the day, it's in, uh, we want to know how is it to treat, an, for example, a cancer patient in the, uh, I mean, in terms of like the race, like for example, how are there similarities or differences when you treat Asian patients or is it different from if you're treating uh, someone from, 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 from another uh, country? So the collaboration and the network that we'll be able to form during this, uh, during this uh, convention, during this conference, uh, it's, it's very, very important. And I think one of the things that I also enjoy when I, when I, when I even if it's no longer face to face, is that you be able to interact with other uh, specialists from 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 the region and from other uh, uh, continents as well. All right, thank you very much, Dr. Sikandat Samala, for your insights on the multidisciplinary um, research advancements and also its application in Asian countries specifically. And we value precision medicine. It's not only in medical oncology, but in all fields, no? So be it pathology, be it um, uh, radiation oncology, surgery, uh, it's the way to go. So our patient is our main focus so we are highlighting and we are focusing on improving our system our policies our standards our researchers and our best practices and we thank you everyone for joining us tonight um see you and enjoy the convention thank you everyone have a nice day take care